we set ourselves in agreement with your word of the pastor Bill and Peggy. And we thank you, Father God, that you do satisfy our soul. You forgive our iniquities and heal our diseases. And we pray in Jesus' name that that healing power that never stopped flowing is present right now in Pastor Bill's body. Wherever he's at, if he's at home, if he's in a hospital, you are there. And we thank you, Father God, that you are working right now to restore him, to renew his youth like the eagles. So, Father God, we thank you for your healing power in that situation. And everybody who agrees says amen. 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 Hallelujah. I want to talk to you about courage this morning. And uh, it's going to take a little bit of courage on my part, actually, to bring forth this word because I need it just the same as everybody else. I'm not generally someone who seeks to be in this position. I, I like to be a support person. I like to, to operate there in the backgrounds. I run sound. I, I do video. Um, but God has called upon me to be here this morning in this situation. He called upon me here to bless you, so I do it even though I'm nervous. Courage, facing your fears, is not necessarily a topic that comes easy, but it resonates deep down within my spirit. A lot of this message I, I've been hearing other pastors talking about, and, and it's just something that you don't, you know, you don't have to deny being afraid, but if you are afraid, courage will help you walk through that, even even when you are afraid. Edit that out of the video. <laughs> Fear is not your friend. Do not reduce your life because of fear. Don't accommodate fear. What are you afraid of? Some might say, I'm afraid of flying. Uh, okay? But the fact that you never get in an airplane, that is not facing your fear, that's accommodating your fear. Don't reduce your life so that you don't fuel the emotions of fear. Fear can cause us to shrink back from what we are called to be, and then we end up living a life that's comfortable instead of profitable or fruitful. Okay, but we're going to look at Joshua for a few minutes. Moses was an amazing man. God called him a friend. He did many miracles in getting the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he led them in the wilderness for 40 years. Yet ultimately, Moses failed to get into the promised land himself. Moses died in the wilderness, and Almighty God called upon Joshua to lead the children of Israel into the promised land. God's first words to Joshua, be strong and courageous. For you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. So let's stop right there for just a moment. Sometimes it's easier to have courage when it's not about you, it's about somebody else. Okay? Um, I necessarily wouldn't stand up here and, and do this thing that I got to do that I'm afraid of, but because there's, you know, all these other people, all these other people relying on me, I. Okay, I can, I can muster up my courage and I can move forward to do that. Sometimes it's easier to be courageous when you know that your courage is not for you, but it's for someone else to fulfill their destiny. God's purpose for us is to lay down our lives for others to be blessed. When I do not stir up my courage, I am taking away someone else's promised land. Someone else's promises. I'm a catalyst to everybody else to fulfill their destiny. If I don't take up my courage and encourage you to fulfill your destiny, that might not happen. You could be a reverse catalyst. I don't have the luxury of being in fear, for my fear may be keeping you from your promised land. Uh, verse number seven says, only be strong. And very courageous, being careful to accommodate all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. 
The next verse says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous, do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So it's, it is right there from God. Do not be afraid. Okay, do not be dismayed. Because all around you is the opportunity to be afraid and to be dismayed. Okay? Because God is with you wherever you go. Notice that God says to Joshua, you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. God is doing it. God has said, if you follow me, don't be dismayed, no problem at all. However, it is up to you to not be dismayed and to follow. For then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. So there's God's part and then there's our part. And God said, don't be afraid. But it's also our part to walk out that which God has called us to do. We have to have courage so that other people will have courage. Other people can walk out the will of God fulfilled. Okay, so God says uh, to Joshua, be strong, courageous, and, and lead my people into the promised land. If he had not done that, Several other things. Who knows? God would have had to raise up Caleb or would have had to raise up the next guy or raise up the next guy. But if Joshua had not chosen to walk it out, he would have further delayed the destiny of the children of Israel getting into their promised land. So this is part of the reason it is so important for us to have courage in the face of something that is scary to us or something we don't particularly uh, find easy to do all the time. Courage is not the absence of fear, it is the presence of perseverance. Courage is what happens when fear says its prayers. I don't think the courage is the absence of fear. Courage feels fear, but I don't let it tell me what to do. Joshua and Caleb were the only two people that came out of Egypt and went into the Promised Land. Scholars believe that there may have been as many as a million Israelites that got taken out of Egypt, taken out of captivity, out of bondage. But only two people made it into the promised land. All the rest died in fear and unbelief. Now, Joshua and Caleb, they could have entered the land of Canaan the next day after they returned from spying out the land. Numbers 14 says, Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the Jeff, the son of Jephunneh, who were of those who searched out the land, they tore their clothes, dug on it. They spoke unto all the company, the children of Israel, the land which we passed through. It's an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear the people of that land, for they are they're bread for us. This is nothing. Their defense has departed from them, and the Lord is with them. Do not fear them. Caleb and Joshua said, we can, yeah, okay, there's some giants, there's some bad things, but God is with us. Let's go over and get it. They were full of courage that day. We can eat those giants for breakfast. They're bread. You know what the next verse of that passage in Numbers says? The people picked up rocks and wanted to kill them. They said, give us a leader that will take us back to Egypt. At least we had food and we had plenty there. The people were full of fear and full of unbelief. Caleb and Joshua were full of courage. God has told us a thing. We can go do it. And the people picked up rocks and wanted to kill them. I didn't put it in part of my message, but the rest of that, about the four, three or four verses after that, God said to Moses, he said, 
step aside, I'm going to kill this whole bunch and we'll start over. And Moses said, you can't do that. You brought them out of Egypt. Egypt is going to think you're a bad God if you do that. So let's, let's just keep working with it. Very interesting. Number, uh, numbers 14, if you get a chance to read that. Joshua and Caleb walked in the wilderness for 40 years with that same courage. Okay? They had uh, uh, seen the promised land and they knew it was good. And so they, I just believe they started stirring up the next generation. Okay? Everybody that would listen to them, they said, hey, uh, you know, there's giants over there, but man, the grape, the grapes are huge, and the land flowing with milk and honey, it's going to be awesome. They stirred up the next generation, speaking to other people to not fear giants, but believe in God's ability to fulfill what he promised. We have to be careful who we surround ourselves with. Are they stirring up your faith? Are they steering up your fear? Proverbs 13, verse 20 says, Spend time with the wise, and you will become wise, but the friends of fools will suffer. So there's a quote that says, You cannot conquer what you refuse to confront. And I am preaching to myself more than any of you all. You're just getting the benefit of what God is speaking to my heart. You can't conquer what you can't confront. So what is courage? If you have to raise up this courage to confront that which you're afraid of. Courage is perseverance. Courage refuses to give up long after everyone else has gone home. Courage is also when someone says they insist that they can't change. Courage says you're better than that. Okay? God is bigger than your past. You can be better. Courage does not look at circumstances to determine what is the right direction to proceed. Courage may get knocked down in the pursuit, but it always gets up. It does not quit, even when every indication is negative. Courage does not particularly care what those around are saying. It places little stock in public opinion. Courage is what will rise up in your heart when everything else around you says, just let it be, go with the flow, don't stir it up, don't fight. This is when it's vitally important to find a promise in God's word and make it your own. Make that line in the sand that says, this is where I will stand. I'm not going to be pushed around on my faith. We talked about faith last week. We talked about fear. We talked about putting your faith in God's word and not the circumstances we see around us. I'm reminded of Abraham. Uh, even if you don't know what you're going or where you're being led to, you can have your courage in God. God's word to Abraham, some of the first words we see where God speaks to Abraham, he says, get up out of your land and I'm leading you into a place you don't know. I'm leading you into a land you know not of. And he, uh, he, Abraham, did not need to know where he was going, only who he was following. So this, this thing about courage is all wrapped up in trust. It's all wrapped up in, in confidence of, of God's word, of God's ability, God's nature. If you can trust God's nature, you can trust where God is leading you. We're living in a unprecedented time of unpredictability. COVID is throwing a huge question mark in our faces and it's hard, maybe impossible to predict what the future is going to be like. However, God says you don't have to understand the world's predictability if you understand my predictability, God's predictability. We don't put our faith in where we're going, but in who we are following. And that, that goes back to the trust issue. That goes back to the confidence of God's word. That goes back to the, the confidence of our past. We've all lived in here 40, 50, 60 years uh, following after God. And, and uh, uh, he says, I've never seen, the psalmist says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. 
never seen his children begging for bread. We've all been through tight scrapes. We've all been through lean moments. But he brought us through every one, every single one. We are being led through scary places, and we must have courage. We're going to look at Psalm 23. Everybody knows it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He leads us. He restores my soul, and he leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they come for me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The paths of righteousness go through the valley of the shadow of death. But I will not fear because he's with me. And if I am afraid, I will walk afraid but in courage because he is with me. Uh, the thing that when fear begins to totally disable you, to, de de to cause you to not be able to function, debilitate you, it's because we forget that he is with us. In the midst of crazy, crazy, scary stuff, he is with us. Okay, so it's like, um, it's like walking through a dark room, but you, your dad is right there behind you. Okay, and he's even holding your hand. So I don't know what's going on. I can't see. I'm a little bit frightened, but I know that my father is with me. And so I can, I can be courageous. And at the end of that, even in the presence of my enemies, he's prepared a table for us, for us to dine with him. When we follow after him, goodness and mercy follow after us because we have the courage to follow him, even in the midst of what we fear. Amen. That's it. Pretty easy, right? Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord, we love you and we know that you are patient and long-suffering towards us even when we have no courage. When we are focused on all that is swirling around us instead of on you, you're leading us through the valley of the shadow of death. You still lead and you still carry us. You still love us. Father God, forgive us for not trusting you. Forgive us for reducing our lives so that we do not have to confront that which we fear. Forgive us for not talking to you, taking you at your word and walking in courage. Forgive us for not courageously leading those around us into their destiny. We promise to fear no evil for you are with us. You prepare a table for us in the presence of our enemies. So we promise to look for you at that table and not be distracted by our enemies. We will not focus on what is trying to destroy. We will focus on you. We will be looking for you in every situation. And everyone who agreed with that says amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us this week online. My name is John Foster, and I send you greetings from Pastor Bill. We pray in Jesus' name that your courage is strengthened in whatever you have to face this week.